guys doing tonight? Good, good. I'm glad to be here. I'm hoping everybody had a great holiday. I got to spend some time with my dad, so I know mine was good. He let me know that this comedy thing is a really good hobby. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. And then he told me about the cable company and how he called them a little liquored up, gave them a piece of their mind, and boy, did he get service. Within three weeks, they were out there to fix the game. <laughs> it's like, I'm ready for turkey. <laughs> Earlier today, I met a manic depressive. At least I think he was a manic depressive. The guy was just walking down the street, happy about being depressed. <laughs> it's like, woo, what's the point? I hate myself. There is no God! Overdose, sleeping pills! Overdose, sleeping pills! I ran up, gave him a dollar, and stole his wardrobe. I, he didn't realize I was paying him for that joke. But I did. And so that made me feel good. I realized whatever he was doing was really on point. I was going to dress up, but... Um, this is pretty much my college fatigue. Uh, so I was dressing in true character. I'm a 33-year-old Scottsdale Community College freshman. Yeah, I've got a lot of jokes. Life has worked out great for me. This hobby's paying off. I have to take uh, math classes again. Boy, that is hard to do. Especially when you look at it now and you've been using math all of your life. And they want you to do math again? And now I have to deal with irrational numbers? It's like four is always like five. I saw you looking at eight. What, you think she's prettier than me? Because she looks like the infinity symbol and she can go on forever? And eight's like four. If you keep acting like that, you're going to end up just like negative two. And negative one is so self-centered. And ten is bipolar. Because it's two numbers, but it thinks it's one. And then Pi shows up. Pi's like, allow me to make a point. You never make a point. You're Pi. And then just allow me to repeat myself. You don't repeat ever. You're Pi. Preferably Pecan, because that's my favorite. That's doing math and college for me at this point in my life. And that doesn't help when you're trying to give students advice on the math questions. I think it's really interesting for me to be back in school because when I was a kid, I learned how to take a mic out of a stand and put it behind me. <laughs> and I brought that into my adult life. I was actually, I was in um, reading disabled and math disabled, like the LDS class. Not the Mormon class, that was Yeah, we went to the Mormon class for math and English. But it's like, that could be a number in heaven, but which heaven? Uh, a little Mormon knowledge there. But I was in disabled reading, and I can still remember my teacher, Per Cuisine, saying, okay, everybody, it's time for reading. Everyone pull out the reading books. Matt and Trevor, you can leave. Uh, oh, okay. So we had to leave, and we had to go to a different class where they would read it a lot slower for the rest of us. And while we were leaving the class, she would hand us a dunce cap because we didn't know anything. I know, it was sad. We didn't know what to do. We just hold hands and skip out of there and be like, we don't know anything. I know. We're morons, but it's going to be a great life. Let's go, Trevor. Thanks. I'm just going to keep skipping. This is how I've learned to deal with my emotional reality. It's just like, nothing to see here. I'm just working through my self-esteem issues. On Maslow's hierarchy of needs, this is not where I need to be. I'm an ex-smoker. I need to not do that much exercise. So my parents are happy about that. They're still happy about that. But yeah, that was, that was, so now I'm actually, I'm an honor student. I actually, I'm on the honor roll now. Scottsdale Community College. Thank you. Thank you. My applause. My applause. Let's give it up for the troops. My applause. Um, growing up was.
was uh, interesting. I had two older si I had two sisters. My oldest sister was bigger than me, which is kind of hard to believe because I'm like 236, 6'1". But she always just kind of walk around the house like, hey, Matt, you want to wrestle? Want some of this? Guess who's going to be making me a sandwich and rubbing my feet later? It's like, dang it, I hate sandwiches. I mean, feet. Sandwiches are delicious. I had to start taking karate to defend myself against my sister. I don't want to say I was bad at karate, but instead of a white belt, they gave me a clear belt. <laughs> then they took that away and just gave me suspenders. <laughs> but I did exactly what I learned in karate. She's like, you want some of this? I was like, yes, I do, Megan. Horse stance, ki My hip just popped. But this is no way you want to fight a sister. Already one with feet. Oh, this was a terrible fighting stance is what I learned that day. <laughs> My older sister did get uh, bit by a scorpion last year. She came in freaking out. Mom, I'm bit by a scorpion, I'm bit by a scorpion. Mother's like, relax, honey, you just put ice on it. That's how you heal a scorpion, you just put ice on it. She lost her leg. <laughs> Frostbite. <laughs> and now we're out of ice. Growing up, my mom used to say the um, saying, well, man, if everybody jumped off a bridge, would you? Yeah. And I'd be like, no. She'd go, why not, son? Don't you want to be popular? <laughs> <laughs> the building was on fire and everybody was running in. You'd run in, right? Like, what? This last year, I, take, I took an Italian long sword fighting class, which was really fun. But they also teach it in Italian, which I don't speak. So the instructor told us to come out and choose a ward, which is Italian for guard, but I thought he said word. So I was standing there going, strawberry, <laughs> strawberry's mine. It's like, is that how you're going to defend yourself? I was like, I guess not. Pomegranate, banana, apple, don't hit me. So that was, that was my sword fighting experience, and then I got hit in the head. But... <laughs> thanks, thanks. And it was kind of just me admitting what really happened and then getting a laugh off of it. So that was good. I, um, I've learned a lot in the last year growing up, going to college again, that like when one door closes, another door does open. I believe that. The only problem is the door opens to an apartment that's not as big as your last one. <laughs> a girlfriend who isn't as pretty as your one before. A car with more miles on it than you already had. A job with less, benef less benefits. Boy, but does it open! <laughs> it opens wide open for you! The opportunities are endless! That's, that's been my college experience. Um, and, uh... A lot of people consider me aloof because I'm standoffish and defensive, abrasive. But once I rub up against them, they realize I'm more of a loofah. <laughs> Thank you, yeah! I didn't know if that joke was going to work. It's like, I'm going to try it. Oh, gosh. So, um, yeah, I had a lot of fun this Thanksgiving with my dad, telling me all about the cable and uh, getting that service. <laughs> And my favorite thing that happened recently was um, he got in a fight when I was a kid at a U of A game, and he was an ASU student. And I was getting to make this amends to him that I'd held that against him for all these years. But he was, you know, kind of acting like an old man and yelling at some other old man across the stands. And the guy came over and punched my dad in the head. And he fell down, and I remember my dad getting up really angry. I got pushed back, and my dad was telling me, well, son, you know, very often I'm misunderstood. I don't think there was any misunderstanding. You, you were drunk, yelling at the other guy, and he came over and hit you. The only misunderstanding is I have to live the rest of my life with a father that got beat up. Like, well, I was outnumbered. We were in Tucson. All right, then. I guess that makes sense. I'm a big ASU fan, and I like going to the games, but whenever they win, they always say, I like to thank God, or I like to thank Jesus. And I think it's 2015, they could just say what they believe. You know, I like to thank God, but what the heck? I caught the damn ball. You're welcome. <laughs> I just noticed I changed hell from heck, and then I said damn, so I'm sorry about that. G-rated show. 
Um, I like to think evolution, because little did those dinosaurs know, 10,000 years from now, we were going to be knocking the heck out of each other for an oblong-shaped ball. <laughs> I just like to hear that at the end of the game. I like to think the little fish crawling in the mud that eventually became me, and I was able to run into the end zone like a sturdy steed. I have been blessed. Some comedians like to end on like a real high note. <laughs> and that's not what I'm going to end up doing tonight. You guys are in for a great show. Are you guys ready for the rest of the comedians to come out and entertain you? Very happy audience. We a lot of good vibes from you guys. The Snacks Comedians just recently done Laughs TV, did a filming for that, which is a network show on Fox at 10.30. She was the feature at the Laugh Factory in Scottsdale, Arizona. And she's got some big things coming up for the next year. She's a director, and she is going to the KFFC. She gave me a lot of letters, but it's the Kennedy Center for the Performing Arts Award in Hawaii, where she gets to go and compete for a $50,000 prize. So without further ado, let me bring up my best friend, Amy Blackwell, everybody. I know you guys bought tickets for the Clean Kings of Comedy, so you're really confused right now. <laughs> but we've made a lot of progress, ladies, right? I am royalty. How you guys doing? How about you guys up in the nosebleeds? What? More tissues. More tissues? More tissues? What's happening? <laughs> How old are you? Like, I know we're near we're near retirement villages, but I didn't know you guys traveled prepared so much. That was a crazy intro. <laughs> He's like, what else do I know about her? Uh, she likes fruit. It's uh, great. It's actually my boyfriend. Uh, I know, I have a lot of patience. We've been together about two years now. Two years, you can clap because you saw him. No, we've known each other for a few years. We got together, but when we, when we finally kind of got together, everything moved pretty quickly. Um, like, we moved right in together, uh, mainly because I was homeless, but <laughs> you know, sometimes you just feel it, right? <laughs> Everything moved quickly, except we, um, I had a little bit of a hard time saying the I love you. Like, it was, I think I was just scared, but it, it took me, I mean, like, we'd, we'd moved in together, we'd been dating for a while, and I, he had said it, and I thought, you know, I, I feel it, I just... I was scared, I was scared to say it, but then you know when the moment hits you and the moment is right, and you have to say it, right? Well, we were at Walmart. <laughs> yeah. No, not like a nice Walmart. No, like a super scuzzy Walmart. Like, like when you pull in and you see all the people with their carts out front, you're not sure if they just finished purchasing things or that's where they sleep. That's one of those Walmarts. And we pulled up, and he jumps out of the car. He just went to go grab something real quick. And, uh, and as I'm watching him go, he's like, I'll be right back. I was like, OK. And I saw him walking in, and I thought to myself, this could be the last time I see him. <laughs> like, I love you. I just wanted you to know it. I'm just going to circle the parking lot with the doors locked until you come out. Or your parents have identified your body. He's a good guy. He's a good guy. I love him. Um, we do have we have a lot of fun together. It's good. It's good. How many couples? Do we have a lot of couples in here? Any morticians looking out back there? It's a couple. Hey, how long have you guys been together? She's like uh, twelve minutes. What time did this show start? We met on Tinder. Okay, swiped right. Good job. <laughs> it's hard. I remember I was single for a really long time. I was a single mom. Any other single parents? Oh, right. I was the only one who made bad decisions tonight. 
No, dating was always hard, and like for a long time, you know, I was single. There was a time that I tried online dating. I tried online dating um, for a little while, and I did. I did end up meeting and, and, and seeing someone for about oh, like four years. Uh, his name was Facebook. <laughs> it was decent. We bought a farm. <laughs> It'll take some of you a minute. <laughs> kind of a dated joke. <laughs> I'm thrilled to be here, though, guys. I'm thrilled to be here. Um, I, when I found out that Tony wanted me to come and do this show, I gotta be honest with you guys, I peed a little. <laughs> I did. It, it wasn't so much from excitement, but that I sneezed. I mentioned I had kids. And once you push out people, all bets are off, guys. Some young women in the audience going, what? <laughs> that doesn't happen. <laughs> yeah, it does. Gear up, get ready. <laughs> There's a whole aisle in the grocery store, you're gonna have to start shopping it. <laughs> At least one half of an aisle. <laughs> Go to the grocery store, you're like, I'm just here to get pill pads. <laughs> Don't mind me, I know where they are. <laughs> I do have kids. I have two. Uh, I have two boys. They are. Let's see. My youngest son is about to turn 16, and my oldest son is 19. <laughs> they're they're only clapping because they are still alive. <clears throat> so like they're teenagers. Oh yeah. Good job. Hey, you didn't kill them yet. Not yet. Not yet. And some of you are looking at me like, wait, what? You have a 19 year old. I do. I had him when I was eight. <laughs> Actually, I had him when I was 19. 19 is pretty young, I was a young mother, teen mother, but uh, I was actually on the late end of all my friends. <laughs> they were like, they were like, oh my god, Amy, it's almost prom, what are you gonna have Amy? <laughs> Like, what do you expect to push during graduation in your stroller? <laughs> like, I don't know, my hopes and dreams. <laughs> I figured I'd keep those for a little while longer. I guess I could explain. Uh, I am a, I'm an Arizona native. Any other natives? A couple. Now, let me clarify. When I say native, I mean born and raised in Arizona. It didn't just come out from the reservation. <laughs> born here. So I was born here. Were you born here, the ones who clapped? No, they just came out from the reservation. Good on you. <laughs> Welcome to Peoria. Uh, I grew up in a small town. I didn't grow up here in the valley. I actually grew up in a small town in northern Arizona called Kingman. Some of you have been there to pee. <laughs> well, that's what you do in Kingman. You, you, you stop there to pee on your way to anywhere better. Anywhere at all. <laughs> You'd be going to Ash Fork, and it's better than Kingman. Now I get it, some of you probably don't know Kingman, you're not familiar, let me, uh, I can catch you up a little bit. Let's see, uh, way back in the news, uh, Kingman was famous for Timothy McVeigh, the Oklahoma City bomber. Yeah, more recently, the three escaped convicts that went on a murdering spree. We were featured on an episode of Hoarders. <laughs> For snakes. <sighs> yeah, thanks, Aunt Brenda. <laughs> if you're not getting the picture, um, let me put it to you this way. Kingman is not unlike a lot of other small towns in Arizona. There's really just two sides. There's the white side, and then there's the methamphetamine side. <laughs> or Walmart, as you call it. I'm from the white side. <laughs> as you can see, I don't really sport that tweaker physique. I'm pretty sure I just heard someone over here go, oh. <laughs> like I wasn't aware of it. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, no, this came as a shock to me. I was just cruising through my living room the other day. Do, 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 caught a glimpse in the mirror and I was like, oh, what happened to me? <laughs> oh, this is going to be a problem. I've been a big girl my whole life, and I gotta be honest, 
honest with you guys, I don't even think about it. I don't, like, in fact, I refer to myself as a sturdy girl. <laughs> sturdy, strong, I am built to last. I'm like a cutlass supreme. I wear jewelry and makeup and hair done. I feel like I put on spinners. I'm like an Escalade. It's great. I am, because I'm confident. I'm confident for a big girl. Well, I, I'm confident for a girl. Shoot, I'm confident for a human. Because <laughs> I figure you should be. Like, you should be. You should be. It doesn't matter. Tall, short, skinny, fat, green, white, yellow, blue, whatever. You should be comfortable in the skin you are in. Don't worry about you guys. Um, the morticians are up there like, whatever. Everybody dies. Well, while you're alive, you should be confident. Because like, I understand it. I know that each and every one of you has insecurities. Because I can see you. But don't get me wrong. Like, I, of course I have insecurities. I mean, duh, look at me. Of course I wish I were shorter. Just wouldn't be fair. No, I am. There's not a lot that gets me down either. Like, like you know, I mean, everybody struggles with something. And I figure, you know, like anything I struggle with, that's you know, that's on me. So there's not a lot that bothers me, you know, aside from my heart health. <laughs> what a doctor's know. I mean, he was like, oh my god, Amy, your cholesterol is 300. It's like, oh, that's amazing. <laughs> I am putting that on my resume. <laughs> no, the, the one thing that does actually bother me about being bigger is that I absolutely hate shopping for my size. I do. I hate it because, like, I'm young, I'm trendy, I want to look cute, I don't want to wear a Golden Maid Lions head sweatshirt <laughs> or Crocs. <laughs> I don't want to look cute. And clothing designers think that a woman of my stature either wants to look like bed sheets or sofa cushions or curtains. I picked up this lovely pillowcase. I got it at linens and things. Um, it's hard. It's hard to shop for me. Cause like I do. I want to. I want to look good. And like, okay. So I had to go. I had to go out. I actually had to go. Did anybody go out Black Friday shopping? Just, no. I don't need a toaster oven that bad. Good on you. I actually went out. Black Friday shopping. I didn't mean to. I just, we ran out of toilet paper. Yeah, so guess who went home with a handful of napkins from Jack in the Box? That'll put you right in the holiday spirit. But I actually, uh, not too long ago, I had to go, I had to go buy a new bra. Let's be honest, I had to buy a new bra. And ladies, you're gonna understand, you, you know it's time to go get one. When, um, cause I was sitting on my sofa and the underwire was stabbing me in the neck. <laughs> I just pulled it out and went on my way. <sighs> Halfway to the store, I'm driving, the strap broke. I was like, oh my god, my body is so repulsive, my underwear is trying to escape. <laughs> it was a bad sign. <laughs> So I can go to like any Dillard's or Macy's and I can I can scan the room and immediately know where my section is. It's kind of like doo, 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 doo. Ah, home decor. There. <laughs> Excuse me, do you have this in giraffe print? Of course you do. Of course you do. I don't know if you know this, but giraffe print on a woman my size looks like cow print. <laughs> and if you don't know, that's mean. That's mean. Cause I don't want to walk around looking like a representative for Chick Fil A. I, I don't. And like I'll go into stores that you know stores that are sometimes I'll find good stores. I went into this I went into this one store and it was like a hybrid store. It was like they didn't want to fully commit to ugly stuff for me. So they were like so like one half of it was really cute skinny girl stuff, you know, and then the other side you know Home Depot. I got a nice tool shed. Um, Fits great, it's good for the winter. <laughs> but it's not bad, it's bad enough that they have, that this store exists, but they've put a wall down the middle of the store. So I am now segregated from the cute clothing. I just do this, so it's like. 
oh, that's really cute. Sales goes like, can I help you? No. I'll go back to my side. <laughs> Do you have anything over there that'll fit me? She's like, we got purses. <laughs> Do any of them come in giraffe print? <laughs> I did buy my first pair of skinny jeans, though. So. Yeah, I think mine are broken. <laughs> I do the sales girl was really goofy. She's like, oh my gosh. You totally have to buy those jeans. I was like, why? Did I pee in them? She says, oh my god, did you? <laughs> I don't know, but I sneezed when I was trying them on. <laughs> She's like, I totally don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> but like, anyway, you should buy those because they give you such a nice butt. It's like, um, thanks? But it's on the front. <laughs> but it's nice, check it out, it's a good one. <laughs> guy's been looking at the whole time I've been up here. He's like, yeah, back that front up. <laughs> I'm watching. I don't know how long this Tinder romance is going to last. Right now. <laughs> you guys are fun. I like you. Last audience, I'm telling you, the last show I did, last show I did, uh, they, like, there was, like, no laughter, no, they, all they did was blink. <laughs> Just. <laughs> that was the last time I do a show to hospice. <laughs> <laughs> but I killed. <laughs> it's for the mortician. <laughs> So, uh, so holidays were fun. Did everybody enjoy your holidays? Get full on turkey? Ready for Christmas? Yeah, yeah. I'm excited. I'm excited. This uh, it's gonna be a weird holiday because I actually just recently lost my dad. Yeah, we were at Walmart. We had to call a code out. It was so embarrassing. <laughs> just kidding. He died. He did. I'm just ah, <laughs> he's dead. Oh, what are we gonna do? It's crazy. My mom and I are trying to plan the funeral, right? Trying to plan the funeral. Here's okay. Here's a little a little side note that the if there were really morticians in here, we'll just pretend they're still here. We'll pretend that it's real. Um, the guy in charge of cremating my father, his name was Blaze. <laughs> like sometimes I don't even have to write. The stuff just comes to me. But my mom and I we were trying to plan the services, the funeral services, and. Um, and she was like, well, we should, the church is available on Friday. She goes, um, so what's the, what's the date? Not this week, but next. And I was like, oh, the 13th? And she goes, oh, we can't have a funeral on Friday the 13th. And I was like, why? She said, it's bad luck. <laughs> <laughs> Hate to break it to you, Mom, but he's already dead. <laughs> I don't think Friday the 13th was his bad luck day. <laughs> It was more like Wednesday the 28th when he didn't see that red truck coming. <laughs> Just kidding, it was a heart attack. But we did, we ended up having the funeral on Friday the 13th because it worked out for everybody. And wouldn't you know it, somebody knocked over the funeral cake doing the electric slide. <laughs> you know, the whole evening wasn't a total loss. You know, at the end of the night, we gathered all the terminally ill out on the dance floor. We threw the funeral wreath. You know, so whoever caught it. <laughs> Next one to go. <laughs> oh, man. Where are there any, like, this is Peoria, so I don't know for sure. Like, are there, are, are there broke people out here? Like, poor people? It's a couple. Some of you are like, me too. We're retired. We have oodles of cash. We have oodles and oodles of cash. <laughs> What does broke mean? It means when you went to dinner tonight that you probably tipped your server more than I have in my bank account. <laughs> That's what broke means. I am, I'm so broke. I 
am so broke that I had a dream the other day that I paid a bill. <laughs> That's where my life is now. It's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. I am, and I'm like, you know, I'm a girl, and like I'm in an entertainment field, and so, you know, there's a lot of pressure to look good. And so, you know, they, there's a lot of different treatments you can do, and, you know, steam baths, things like that. You want to look nice. And I can't just rely on the fact that I look young forever, right? Now, speaking of that, if you guys want to know, I found the Fountain of Youth. I'll share it with you guys. Want it? Yeah? Okay. All you got to do is go out and get yourselves a fat face. <laughs> that's it. Now, not too fat of a face. You don't want a face that's too fat for your face. You know, you don't want a face that, that's so fat it looks like it's eating your face. You don't want a face that's so fat it changes your ethnicity. Like this is the perfect amount of face fatness right here. Because it pushes all the wrinkles right out. It, does. it works just like Jupiter. You know? But with carbs and a sedentary lifestyle. That's great. It does. <laughs> But no, I've had to find ways, you know, to, to, to keep up with, with things. And um, I went to go, I, I found out, I called around to find out how much like a chemical peel is. It's like $150, which that's a lot of ramen. Like, <laughs> it's too much. And so what I do is I just go downtown and let a homeless man talk to me directly in my face. <laughs> Sloughs that skin right off. I like to go get a steam every once in a while, but like you have to have like a like a you know the spa memberships or like a, I don't go to a gym, uh, obviously. And so like you know you have to pay for that. But I found a little trick. I found a little trick. Uh, you just wait till payday Friday. You jump on the bus to Glendale to the check cashing place. Plenty of sweaty bodies. Steams you right out. It's great. Everyone's just oh. I can tell you I peed my pants, you're fine with that, but I talk about sweaty Glendaleites. Those Glendale people. Oh, unless you guys are Glendale people, sorry. There were some broke people. Oh. Uh, <laughs> no, but um, I love doing fun stuff. But, like for Christmas, I want to do, I want to plan something fun to do with my kids as opposed to like presents. Because I always find that it's, it's making those memories that seems to matter. You know, those are the things that I really, like, I enjoy doing that with my kids. In fact, I wanted, to, I wanted to do this really cool thing with my kids. When I was a kid, my mom, my whole family, we would go to this great place in Vegas called Wet n Wild. Awesome water park, super fun, water slides, good times, right? Well, they closed when I was, like, 15, but I found out a couple years ago they reopened. I was like, that's it. Doing that with the kids. I was like, get in the car. I set the GPS. Four and a half hours later, bing, you have arrived at your destination. <laughs> Jump out, we're so excited. <laughs> Here's the thing. There are now two places in Las Vegas called Wet and Wild. <laughs> One of them is not a water park. <laughs> PR, you've been fantastic. Enjoy the rest of the show. Favorite here in the valley. He's been doing comedy forever and we all love him. Give it up for Tony Visick! Amy Brockwell, ladies and gentlemen, keep it together. I got no, they did bring me a, I got, there's, I, I don't, can you? Huh? No, I'm talking to you. Um, <laughs> you're so used to people talking to you that you thought I was talking to you. But I'm not talking to you, because I know that if someone talks to you, you say, don't talk to me. I'm talking to you. I don't... I'm just, you know what? I don't even know what to do now. I'm lost without a place to put my soda. That's how OCD I am. I've got, I'm going to put it... He's going to sing later. <laughs> K 
Can we hear it for, uh, for Amy and Matt? Can we hear it for two very funny people? With I'm so glad you uh, decided to share your uh, Thanksgiving weekend with us. It's uh, so nice to see how many people didn't get invited out of town. So, <laughs> no one invited us and no one came over either. So, uh, my name is Tony Visick and uh, I put together the shows here at the comedy shows at the Pierre Center for the Arts. So, I'm glad to see you here. And uh, I'm, I'm just excited to see how uh, I just turned 60 years old by applause. How many people are 60 or over? Let's hear it. 60 or over? Yeah. Now watch this. How many people are under 50? You hear the difference? That's false hope. <laughs> yeah! We still got a shot! No, you don't. You notice I, I said over 60 and under 50, because those 10 years right there, those are just horrible years where it just goes weird. So, uh, but that's, I'm, I, I, I'm just pleased, ple I'm, ple I'm pleased that you're out here because I, I give you credit for coming out. Because if I wasn't working, I'd already be home in bed. I would, I'd have soup and go to sleep. Matter of fact, that sounds like a good idea, doesn't it? Soup and sleep. I'm gonna open that store. Soup and sleep, for all your soup and sleep needs. Come on in, we got a fa fantastic Thanksgiving deal on soup and sleep. Do you like soup? Yes, I do. Do you like sleep? You darn tootin'. <laughs> then come to Soup and Sleep. We're having a white sale. White soup, white mattresses, everything white. <laughs> I like that some of you are getting the jokes and some of you are a little confused. I enjoy that. Will the people who are getting the jokes run around and explain to people who aren't getting the jokes? Help them out? It's like this side of the room is doing so much better than this side of the room. I, I gotta do something for them now. I'm that heck with them. Listen! Yeah, that'd be, I'm gonna make those beds. Soup and sleep beds. Yeah, soup and sleep. Now in Gilbert, Glendale, Peoria, Bangor, Maine, and Omaha. I did that joke the, the other night, some lady yelled out, what about Chandler? I said, it's an imaginary store. It doesn't exist. You are upset that an imaginary store that will never exist based on a joke is not open in your town. There is something wrong with you. You must have just moved from Ahwatukee. Thank you. A woman over here just said, that's funny. I like that. No layoffs, they're now grading the jokes. That one was funny, that one was very funny. I didn't care for that one. You know, we got family in Awatuki, we shouldn't laugh at that one. <laughs> Man, you have to laugh at the entire group, all right? This is a group exercise here. This woman, by the way, is the designated laugher. If you're not sure her joke's funny and laughing, or if she's laughing, just unpuck her and have some fun, all right? We're all grown people here. Are you okay? Do you need a doctor? What do you got, SARS? You saw what happened when I talked to her. Yeah, I'm gonna make those beds, soup and sleep beds. I'm gonna build mattresses with giant soup bowls in them. And you just lay face forward and suck soup till you pass out. I had a problem today, uh, I'm on medication, I mean, which is, I guess, not surprising. But, uh, <laughs> but I'm at that age where you, you, you can guess someone's age by the number of pills they take in the morning. How many pills do you take? Five. Oh, you're 71. <laughs> and I have that problem where I'll get up in the morning and, you know, and after I, you know, shave and brush my teeth and stuff, I'll start to walk around and go, did I take my pills? And I can't remember if I took them. You know, and sometimes they just give them to me, and you know, sometimes they give me the, the idiot pills. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And then there's those last two pills, you know? Uh, next to the last dose, last dose, you're gonna die! You know? Uh, but sometimes they just give them to me like in a jar, you know? And, and then I can't remember, so I pretend like it's the old days and I crush them and snort them. <laughs> and what I'm taking is, I'm taking like over-the-counter Primusec, so I'm snorting Primusec, which can make for one interesting day. This joke has become like a wave joke, have you noticed that? I stopped and people are like taking turns laughing at it. 
Like you're at the ballpark and the game's not going well, so you're just taking over yourselves. Maybe you're telling each other your own jokes. Yeah, I'm like 60, man. I'm 60 and uh, I'm 30 years clean and sober. Thank you. So for 30 years, I've been clean and sober. For 30 years, I was drunk, which means for 30 years, I had a good time. And for 30 years, I was drunk. So... And then it's a math joke. Not as hard as Matt's math jokes, but still. Yeah, I, uh, 30 years ago, I gave up drinking. I gave up drugs. I gave up gambling. I gave up smoking. I'm actually addicted to quitting stuff. I'm down to breathing. I'll be going to breath and honors. <laughs> Hi, I'm Tony. I'm a mouth breather. <laughs> Hi, Tony. <laughs> I haven't breathed through my nose for the last four days. Keep coming back. <laughs> but like I said, I still take pills. I just take them for different reasons than I used to. So you just take pills to get high, and I take them so I can go to the bathroom. <laughs> I'm still trying to get off. It's just a different thing I'm trying to get off of. Came from a long family of drinkers. That was the problem. We just, you know, we just drink. You know, the day I was born, everybody got drunk. You know, my mom got drunk and left me. Just, I was just drunk all the time. I, uh, I, I grew up in this little town uh, called House Springs, Missouri. We got in front of the Midwest. We got Midwesterners here. There we go. Woo! There was your last vestige of hillbillyism. Woo! Where in the Midwest are you from? Indiana. Indiana wants me. Lord, I can't go back there. Thank you. Who got it? 1970s pop song. Indiana. That's a hip state. That's swinging, man. A lot of jazz fans there. It's like, you know, what's weird is in uh, Utah, they have uh, a basket uh, Utah Jazz. It's a basketball team, which is weird because it's black people on the basketball team. And two things they don't have in Utah are black people or jazz. <laughs> You grew in Indiana. In Indianapolis? No, Southeastern. Southeastern? What was the name of your town? Greensburg. Greensburg? Oh, yeah. Never heard of it. Thank you. So, um, <laughs> Greensburg. I grew up in Missouri. I shouldn't make fun of your town. I grew up in, I grew up in Half Spring, Missouri. That's where I grew up. People talk like they didn't call it Missouri, they called it Missouri. Ah. One of those little towns where whatever people said to you, whatever, whatever they said, sounded like they were going to kill you. They looked at you with hate in their eyes. Even even, how you doing? I'm doing good. How you doing? <laughs> Having a nice day? You're in church. Our Father, who art in heaven. <laughs> so we're going to talk about House Spring, Missouri. It's 50% Irish, 50% Italian, and 100% alcoholic. <laughs> we didn't have a town drunk. We had a town sober guy. Look, he's walking around. He's all fancy. <laughs> I was arrested for drunk driving three times, which only proves one thing, that there are not enough cops on the road. Because <laughs> I drove drunk every night for years. I only got caught three times. After all, I'm all complaining about it. Where are my tax dollars going? I've been driving down the middle of the road for an hour now. How are you supposed to catch crack dealers if you can't find me? <sighs> I don't know if you've been arrested for drug driving. By applause! How many people here have been in federal prison? By applause! <laughs> <laughs> Who's the guy in the back? Yeah. <laughs> By applause! How many people stay in prison? Let's hear it. Come on. How many people have committed a crime you went to for life in prison but you never got caught? My applause! <laughs> I saw your hand go up, sir. But it... <laughs> How many people here of everything you've ever done wrong in your life, you've been caught for, you wouldn't be here tonight? My applause! <laughs> there, finally! Some truth! I don't know if any of you have been arrested for drug driving, okay? But when you are arrested for drug driving, it's very embarrassing. I don't recommend it. Right. First off, I didn't realize, at first you don't realize that you're being arrested, you know? Uh, I, because you're in a good mood, you're drunk. <laughs> and you're left one bar and you probably got a plan someplace else. You see, you're on your way with a plan, you're in a good mood, you're having fun. 
You know, and then all of a sudden, you see lights, and I thought the party was following me home. <laughs> I thought I was so popular at that bar that the party was going, let's go with him. He's a fun man. You know, and there's music going, like, woo, woo. So it's the 70s, I think it's disco, you know. Yeah, man, we're going to have disco at the house. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> I get pulled over. I don't so much just pull over as I end up like driving off into a ditch. I fall out of the car face first, followed by like a thousand empty beer cans. I got the gall to look at the cop and go, excuse me, do you know where the recycling center is? <laughs> now while we're on the subject of recycling, do you guys recycle? Yeah. Not me. I watch the Sopranos. Um, I... Does it cause you stress? It doesn't stress you out, it's trash. I have to think about it more than the food that I ate. I just put the food in the microwave and eat it. Afterwards, there's 15 different things I have to separate in order to be a good human being on this planet. It's not enough that I was nice to my kids and nice to my grandkids to pay my taxes. No, man, if I put an apple core in the wrong can, I'm going to hell. It's gotten out of hand. We got a can for paper, we got a can for plants, we got a can for cans. I went downstairs the night, my wife was sitting there floor crying, holding some of her hands. I don't know what it is. I said, it's a ham sandwich, eat it. That's another form of recycling. Is there an echo here? Because people are like, give the jokes and... Yeah, so I got arrested, man, for uh, drunk driving. It's been a long time. But I, this was like, the last time I was arrested for drunk driving was uh, over 30 years ago. So, uh, but when I got arrested for drunk driving, uh, you actually had to be um, um, uh, drunk. Not like now. Now you can be arrested for like future drunk. They can watch you, and if they see you headed to a liquor store, they can throw you in jail. You know? Uh, but I, I, so I got, I got arrested, and a cop gets by the car, and, uh, and I'm standing there, he goes, uh, we're going to give you a test. I go, oh, shame. Let's go. Make a multiplication choice. I'm good at those. <laughs> Stop moving. Nice hat. He looks at me and goes, Can you do this? I go, No. Can you do this? <laughs> he could. They're very athletic, our police officers. Very athletic. So then he goes, can you do this? This is when I always get to it. Well, can you do this? And you go, one, two, three, four, three, two, one, two, three, four, three, two, one. Guys, I straightened up. I looked that cop right in the eye. I go, <laughs> yes, I can. Next question. <laughs> I don't do it anymore. I'm like, you know, it let you do it, and then you stop. You know, if you're smart, you stop. You know, if you're smart, you never do it. But uh, uh, I stop it now. You know, I'm like, uh, I really like, I really like the way my life is right now. It's, it's a good life. You know, I, that's one of the great things about America. You know, the great thing about America is, I'm sure you all got your opinions. I'm like into politics. I'm, you know, what makes it great is you can screw up so many times and still end up with a three bedroom, two story house someplace in the desert, and it'll all be okay. <laughs> you can do the stupidest stuff between the ages of like 14 and 40. And still, better, hey, nice day, nice lawn. You can do that in America. That's what I love. Because if I live in another country, you know, I, I've been dead at like 12. He must die. <laughs> I like it here, man. I, I'm married, and uh, thank you. Thank you for the one person applauded. The rest of you went, yeah. <laughs> I didn't totally straighten out. <laughs> How many married folks you got here? Let's hear it. Married? Happily married? <laughs> liar! Liar! You saw a guy, you saw a guy going, yeah, you were gonna do that, weren't you? There you go, that's hurting my diabetes. <laughs> How many single folks we got? <laughs> it's a much smaller group. We got kids here. You know, you got a nine-year-old, I'm single, yeah. So it's not Afghanistan, of course. <laughs> actually weren't adding, you were part of that equation. It was like, you know, it's like asking if your dad is political, you know, you know. I like being married, I do. I married a woman, a uh, wonderful woman, uh, really great, 
we get along because I just go, yeah, okay, sure. <laughs> sure, I'm all for it. Your parents, let's go. Okay. Your daughter, let's go. They, they need to move in, let them move in. I don't care. Just, you know, just leave me like the bathroom on Wednesdays. That's all I'm asking. <laughs> Some people have been married, how many people have been married like a long time, like 25, 30 years? 56? There you go. 56 years. Yeah? Good for you. Are you happy, sir? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> what difference does it make at this point? Yeah, it, it doesn't make any difference now, you know? There's one day you went, you know what, even if I could, I'm not, I can't, so forget it. <laughs> That was like that weird laugh you hear. Like if you go down the basement to check on a noise. <laughs> You're scaring me. I like being married. I like my wife. She's cool. She is. Uh, she's, uh, um, I, she's younger than me, but she's in my age range. Because when I was younger, I, I did that stupid thing that guys do. You know, where uh, when I first started coming out here to Arizona, doing business out here, where I come out and uh, near Scottsdale, you know where this is going. And, um, and I, I would date women like younger than me, but finally I stopped doing that because I just got start, tired of answering questions. Because that's it. They just went, really? What happened? You were two presidents in Bush? That's so weird. That's so weird. Was it the same guy with different hair? Like in a soap opera? Like that one guy who just died with the gray hair and he was playing two characters? I can't No! No! I asked my wife when I met her, I go, uh, do you know who the Flying Burrito Brothers are? And she can name every member of the band. I went, you're the girl for me. <laughs> we didn't even get into the Burge or Buffalo Springfield or nothing. I went, this is her. This is her, man. And then you're like, we have a great marriage. Some people don't know if they're in a good marriage or a bad marriage or no. Maybe they've been married like 56 years. They have no idea, you know? So here's some tips to know if you're in a good relationship or a bad relationship, okay? All right, for instance, if you gaze in one other's eyes for hours on end, that's a good relationship. But if while you're doing it, one of you goes, hey, what are you looking at? <laughs> that's a bad relationship. <laughs> if you cannot restrain yourselves when you're in public, that's a good relationship. But if while you're in public, one of you screams out, go away, I have a restraining order. That's a bad relationship. <laughs> if he says, I'm going to take out the trash, that's a good relationship. If he then takes your parents out to dinner, that's a bad relationship. <laughs> I'll tell you something, you know, I'm an older guy, and uh, I'm married, and I'm happily married, but if you were a woman, and you want to uh, find a good guy, you should date older men. You should date older men. We will never, we will, you know what? We will never cheat on you. We can't. <laughs> You take care of us once a month, and we're out there, we're out there raking that rock lawn the rest of the time. What do you want me to do now? <laughs> Is there any soup? <laughs> <laughs> and we mean what we say, and we say what we mean, don't we? We do. For instance, if I ever say to my wife, hey, let's go to the other room and lay down. I mean, <laughs> let's go to the other room and lay down. Ain't nothing gonna happen. I, uh, I went to Walmart the other day. I know, somebody said, oh, you know? <coughs> you guys see a lot of comics. Um, if you, if you, I don't know if you guys go to a lot of comedy shows. We'd like to put together, like, really kind of, we try to make them special for this place. Like, we've done, uh, uh, like, fun political shows called Right Wing, Left Wing. They're, like, panel shows. We've done men versus women. We try to put together fun things, not just the usual comedy show, a bunch of 22-year-old kids cussing about stuff they don't even know about yet. We don't like to do that. You know, we like to do uh, certain things, but uh, if you go, you hear comics make fun of Walmart, and what they'll do is they'll make fun of the people that are shopping at Walmart all the time. Oh, did you see them? And I asked the comic one time, go, how did you come up with that joke? I was in Walmart. Aha! You see, you are the problem. You see, I don't make fun of people at Walmart because I go to Walmart, and I understand what happens, how you become Walmartized. <laughs> It happens to you. I was one of those people going, oh, I'm not going to shop at Walmart, but then one day I went, I want to hold on to my money. So um, so I started going to Walmart, you know, and they were like, 
I went in there one time with an empty box, and I said, I got this here, and they go, go get a TV. So, <laughs> it's a good deal, Walmart, you know? And people like to make fun of the way people dress at Walmart, you know? But I don't do that, because one day I was in Walmart, and I heard people on the other aisle making fun of the way a guy was dressed, and I went around to see who it was, and I went, shut up, it's him. <laughs> because of my life is I own my own life, okay? I'm in a Walmart. It's not even like a cool North Scottsdale Walmart. I'm in a Walmart on Casa Grande Highway in Pinal County, and it was my idea. No one forced me. I wasn't drafted. I, there was no lottery. You know, there was no greetings from Uncle Sam. You have to move out to the desert and shop at Walmart. No, it was my idea. That's what got me there. Wherever you are, you put yourself there. Your, it was the sum total of all my bright ideas got me in a suit, but it's a super center, so it's over 24 hours, so it's really good. <laughs> I wasn't going to move to one that closed at night because, you know, if I run out of my prescription, I can go right down there. But um, I'm there, man, and I'm in Walmart, and what happens to you at Walmart, you guys, is after a while, it's not that the people are bad dressers or that they're weird. It's just you just go to Walmart. You've all been to Walmart. How many of you have ever gone with your husband, your wife, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, and go, we're going to Walmart, is this okay? <laughs> do I look good for Walmart? Should I put, on, put my hair up? I'm going to do my nails, we're going to Walmart on Wednesday. No, you just go with whatever you got on. And if you got nothing on, that's what you're going in. I went to Walmart the other day, man. I was wearing like cowboy boots, one of my wife's skirts, you know. One of the kids' Batman mask, running around the house. And my wife goes, brought a cheese and toilet paper, which are two weird things to be out of at the same time. That's one of those over 60 things. And I go, okay, I'll go to Walmart. I didn't change. I just went out the door. I wasn't even thinking. And I just went to Walmart. You know what? Nobody said anything. The guy in a Spider-Man mask just went cool mask. That was it. <laughs> there was a guy with a live animal wrapped around his loins. Nobody said anything. He worked there. He was helping us out. Yeah. <laughs> I still, though, I, I still try to fool myself. I mean, I used to live on Hollywood Boulevard in Hollywood, California. I used to hang out with members of Duran Duran and the Sex Pistols, and now I'm at a Walmart in Pinal County. Thank God, though, we don't have a weird sheriff out there. And, um... <laughs> See, I just did it. So, <laughs> and that's where I live, and that's what I do, you know? And I just don't, but I'll still go in there and try to fool myself. You know, I trick myself that there's something more going on, you know? So what I like to do is I like to pretend like I'm like a Beretta or Starsky's and Hutch or some other really bad 70s cop show, and then I'm chasing the suspect into Walmart. <laughs> and I like zigzag and serpentine. I don't walk down the aisles like a loser. No, I'm cutting through. You know, I'm cutting through like, like the drug. I'm cutting through like, you know, children's clothes and cosmetics, and I've gotten stopped for that a couple times. What are you doing? You're wearing a dress and a Batman mask. And I'll, I'll shoot through the store. I, take, I know shortcuts. Walmart, man. You ever want to get through Walmart quick? You come see me, okay? I know how to get the dog food and the electronics and the can of soup. Boom! And 15 less steps than anybody. I know what I'm doing, right? So, <laughs> so I'm sorry, And what I'm there for is dog food. Not, it's for, I got a dog. I'm not there yet. I'm not there going, oh, here's what we'll say money until the check comes. So, um, and what I like to do, here's what I like to do, okay, is when I get to the dog, now if you ever bought dog food at Walmart or any store, they'll have cases, right? And they got the cases, and they'll cut the case in half, they cut the top off, but they don't cut it straight across. You ever notice that? They cut it down low, so just a little strip. So the case is wobbly. So you gotta be careful when you pull it out or cans will fall off. Then, if you're like me and you can't bend over, I don't know how I'm getting this soda after the show. I'm like, good, it takes me an hour to get up, and for the rest of the day, we go, you know, he, he's, you know, he really works hard, he likes to stand the whole time, and I'll have, 
I can't sit down. So you don't want to drop any cans, so you're trying to slide it out. And so I, I pretend like I'm a magician. And I try, like to whip out all 24 cans, have them land right in my cart without dropping one. That's pretty cool. And I sit there and I look at my wife and go, huh? Oh, she goes, yeah. <laughs> I get a lot of that from her. When I first met her, she you're so funny. And I go, how about that? She goes, oh, God. <laughs> so now I got 24 cans. Now here's another Walmart secret if you don't know. You might not know this. You're young. You're in love. You need to think about these things. You get older. Okay? I'm going to help you out, man. If you have a bulk item in Walmart, like say you got 10 or something, or 12 or something, or 24 cans of dog food, and you just hand them one and go, I got 24, you don't have to put them all up there. They'll just ring 24 times that can. That's why they're the number one retailer in the world. Think about it, man. Don't tell me they didn't use drugs, because that's, yeah. So, um, <laughs> so, and that's kind of cool. Plus, because they don't give you like a big space. Like, you know, it's, anyway, I'm there, and I hand the lady my can. I go, here, dog food, 24 of them, bring it up. And this is what this woman says to me. This woman, she woke at me, and she said to me, Tony, she said, are they all the same flavor? <laughs> I go, what's that got to do with anything? She goes, well, if they're different flavors, then you have to put them all up one at a time. And I go, there's no flavor in those cans. That is mud from the bank of a river in the Gulan province of China that they shove into a can and then inject with food coloring and taste and dye. That's what that is. There's no liver or beef in there. This comes from the third world. There's beef or liver. They're either selling it to someone, they're putting it in their bodies, or they're eating it. This is junk. Are they all the same flavor? <laughs> I go, I don't know. And I look, and they're not. So I gotta push them up there one at a time, right? And then I'm looking at her, and I got like Manson eyes. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> and she's looking at me with Walmart eyes, like, you can't kill me, I'm already dead. <laughs> so I got out of her way to my house. So I got this house. I did it! It's a 10. Um, I got a house, and I, I don't make fun of people. I don't believe in making fun. You meet people, and you get to know people, and there's no reason to really make fun. If you really get to know people, I don't make fun of people for their ethnicity or their religion or where they're from, because you really get to know people, there's real reasons to hate them besides that. <laughs> like the way they breathe or something, you know what I mean? Or they always got something in the corner of their mouth. So, um... No, I, don't, I can't, and I have no business making fun of anybody because uh, for years I lived in Los Angeles, I came out here, and then in 2006, I decided as an investment, in 2006, no, 2005, 2006, as an investment to buy a house in Arizona. Yeah, yeah right then, and I bought it in a town called Maricopa, oh, which did not exist until I bought the house. <laughs> I drove out there and they went, we got one! If you don't know where Maricopa is, this is how you find it. You take the 10 East, like you fail, and you go back to live with your relatives in Indiana. And, uh, <laughs> and right when you get to Queen Creek Parkway, you make a right, and you drive, 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 and you, drive and you go, who in God's name would live out here? That's Maricopa. <laughs> the other way to know you're in Maricopa is if you're ever coming back from like San Diego, and, and you're taking the back way through the 8, and you're driving through this little road, and go, oh, what's that smell? That's Maricopa! That's the smell of industry. I bought a house as an investment in Maricopa in 2006. Because I came out here and I didn't know the difference between, it's desert to me. It's Scottsdale, Maricopa. It made no difference to me. I go, it's all dirt. Go, yeah, it's all dirt. Go ahead, buy that house then. You know? So I buy this house in there and as soon as I buy it, boom, the housing market collapses, right? It collapses. And my house, which was worth a quarter million dollars, is then worth a quarter. <laughs> now the good news is, while I was living out there, I met my future wife, okay? And everything I'm about to tell you right now is absolutely true. I'm not making it up, no stretch of the truth at all. Uh, I'm going home one night from uh, a show or something that I'm doing. You know, and if you want to find out about what we do, you know, for instance, uh, my wife is actually in the center room. We're doing a live 
podcast. That's why I'm glad you guys have a good time. We're doing a live podcast of this show on our internet radio station, ComedySchoolsRadio.com. You got downloads there. You can listen to us uh, live every Thursday and Friday morning where we do shows. So that's my wife right there doing it. Give my wife a hand because she's actually... stuff and I'm coming home one night you know right in the middle of the recession and I'm not feeling good and I have to stop at the local bashes to buy some stuff that you need if you live in Maricopa because you want a house there you know and uh, I'm there and I'm buying like toilet paper and cheese as usual and uh, and then also uh, a gun and some bullets and a note so I can write a note so um, and I, I, I stopped to pick up a copy of the New York Times because even though I live on the moon I still want to feel connected to planet Earth by accident, I pick up a copy of the Wall Street Journal. Now, I've never bought the Wall Street Journal before in my entire life. The Wall Street Journal is for people to know about money as an investment about a house in Maricopa. <laughs> I am a financial idiot. But they're out of New York Times, so I take my Wall Street Journal home. Now, I'm living with Shirley at the time, and I want to read my paper. So, and all men, you know this. Okay, I'm going to tell on us. I want to read my paper, so I take my paper to the bathroom. I don't really have to go. Matter of fact, I can't until I take the pill. But I want to read, so I'm going to the bathroom. Because the issue is, if you're reading a magazine or a newspaper, your wife will ask you what you're reading, and you will tell her what you're reading, and then she'll start talking about like her sister. <laughs> what are you reading about? Well, there was a there was a, so a problem in Paris. Did I tell you about my sister? She's sick. But I don't think she's sick. I think she's actually faking it. She always does that right around the holidays so she gets extra gifts. She did it ever since we were kids. So I go, oh, 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 I gotta go to the bathroom. So I wanna hear about that, yeah, I do, but I gotta go to the bathroom. <laughs> so I go to the bathroom with the Wall Street Journal. I'm in a house I never planned on living in, but as an investment, holding a newspaper that I had never bought before in my entire life, and I'm sitting in the bathroom, I read my article on the front page of Wall Street Journal. You can Google this, you can look this up. This is true. And then uh, it says, continue on the next page. I turn to the next page. There's my article, but at the top of the next page is a giant headline that says, Dream Dies in the Desert, Maricopa, Arizona. <laughs> it's a New York newspaper. I go, this is amazing. I start reading the article. And the article says that ground zero of the American home foreclosure crisis is the bedroom community of Maricopa, Arizona. <laughs> it was called a bedroom community because we just all laid in bed and cried. <laughs> we couldn't afford soup. <coughs> I continue to read this is ground zero of ground zero is the subdivision of Maricopa Meadows. What is the name of my subdivision? I never finished reading the article, I was afraid to. Because I was reading the last paragraph and it said, sitting in a bathroom, in a house. But you know, folks, my name's Tony Visick. You've been wonderful. Thank you very much. Thank you. I brought one more guy for you. Can you hang for one more guy? I want to make sure you have a great time. Please check Theater Works at Peoria Center for the Arts. Check their websites. And also check ComedySchools.com. we got three shows coming up here in 2016 that we want to really put on great shows for you guys here in your neighborhood that you'll like and love. So check those websites to find out when they're uh, going to play. Uh, become my friend on Facebook, uh, and I'll friend you back, and then I'll send you uh, weird messages all the time. Please come to the show. Do that. We'll tell you about what we do in 2016. Are you ready for your final act of the evening? favorite comics because I was in therapy for many years, and in, in a moment you'll see what I'm talking about. Very funny man. Ladies and gentlemen, a warm welcome please, John Gregory!
I'll let you trade those golf clubs to Grandpa for his dress. <laughs> but I gotta admit, I think Grandpa looks a lot better in that dress. <laughs> we got any Arizona natives here? <laughs> Just those two crazy people, that's it. <laughs> but I grew up here in Phoenix. And I gotta tell you people, I think it's the most beautiful place in the world. <laughs> that thought does change a little bit when I take a long drive down Grand Avenue. <laughs> and crazy things start popping in my head like, Tucson's not a bad place to live. <laughs> As I look around here in this beautiful place, I must say, this is by far the most beautiful crowd I've ever seen. <laughs> Except for you, sir. Your job ain't gorgeous.
until they live it. <laughs> I dropped the buddy off at the airport this morning. I convinced them that you're not allowed to take cash onto the airplane anymore. <laughs> Guess who's $65 richer? that joke. We gotta upgrade his probiotics. <laughs> probiotics are healthy for you, son. It's the whole foundation of your immune system. All the other people in here have no idea I knew that. <laughs> I told her, one day, I'm going to take you inside this 
stress shot? <laughs> and I still remember the very first time I ever asked a girl to marry me. She just asked me a bunch of stupid questions. Like, who are you? How did you get in here? Where's my husband?
Trump's life's times. <laughs> and so we keep doing it. And Center for the Arts that Tony teaches. Also, we have some win for VIP tickets, $100 value. If you put your email on there, we'll go ahead and email those out to you, also on the snack bar. And if all else fails, go to Comedy Schools, rate comedyschools.com, and find out when we're doing a future show. Do you guys all have a great time? Yeah.